So hello everyone and welcome to our fourth annual Rigor User Conference. Uh, this is a very special event for us and we are happy to see all you here joining us today. I can see our clients as well as a lot of new faces. Uh, so welcome and let's get started. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dasha, I'm Marketing Director here in Rigor. And we have a lot of uh, exciting things to share with you today. For those of you who do not know uh, do not know us yet, we'll talk a little more about uh, Rigor, who we are, what Rigor is. We'll show you product updates and some new functionality. Uh, you'll see interviews with uh, industry experts as well as uh, with some of our current uh, customers. And we'll also present a few awards to our customers and share plans for future development. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll have a Q&A session uh, where we'll reply all your questions. That, uh, so uh, if you have any question during the presentation, you can just find the Q&A icon in your Zoom control panel and type your question, and we'll for sure answer it at the end of uh, the conference. And uh, let's get started now. And I want to pass the uh, microphone to Nikolai, who is our VP of Marketing and Business Development here in Uyghur. Uh, he will talk about uh, rigor and uh, some. He will share some results uh, of to 2020 and uh, some information about company development. So, hello, Nikolai. Hello, Dasha, and thank you very much for the introduction. Indeed, today is a special occasion. We uh, just wanted to briefly tell you guys that we run this major um, user conference once a year, and February is a known month of awards. So, there's a, a bit of a coincidence there why we run it in February specifically. Um, don't expect an Oscar, but it's going to be something very close to that. And um, one other thing that we try to make sure that it is a very useful event for everybody who's joining us. And there's a different uh, spectrum of who is with us today. So not only our clients quite often join, but somebody who is looking at different solutions also are checking out uh, what is rigor community is made of, who is it made of rather. And uh, also this year is a little different because we want to introduce um, a, a new section where we share some of the insights uh, from, uh, from an expert that we've had a privilege to interact with in the past year. So Without further ado, let me uh, dive a little bit in into the 2020 uh, in a nutshell or highlights of the year. Uh, and then we'll just move on the COVID thing. So we know that we've been, all of us globally have been through a lot in the uh, past 12 months, uh, but we're glad to be here today. So how about, um, you know, being uh, grateful for what we've got and how interesting a year it was for us indeed. So some of the statistics are presented here on the slides and you can peruse them while I'm talking. But the key highlights of this past 12 months were that we usually we fly at least 10 times more. We didn't this year and no surprise, nobody probably did as, it, even if they wanted to. Uh, so one thing that also has changed this year specifically when we talk about talking to people because we are very people to people oriented organization. Uh, so we have attended only one trade show last February. So there was none anymore in person um, meetings at a trade show, but it's gonna change, we hope, in the coming year. So expect to see us face to face, uh, even as soon as in uh, March in Midland, if you are in the vicinity uh, in uh, this year, and many more events will be added to, to uh, where we're gonna be in, the, in this specific year. Uh, one other change that has happened this year is that uh, we've had tremendously many more virtual meetings and um, that's a good and a bad thing, but on a good side, we've had an opportunity to talk to so many more people uh, now because we, it's been a little more efficient when we're using new technology. Uh, we've hosted a lot of webinars, we've developed products significantly, and this uh, last uh, year was very interesting in a sense that we've, um, we've built literally a more enhanced ERP-like offering to all of you guys. And uh, this is what we're gonna be talking a little bit about uh, in a few seconds. So in a nutshell, what is uh, rigor these days after the 2020 COVID? So we took this as an opportunity for ourselves and we've looked at what market may need even when the prices of oil were down below any level that it could have been expected to be. And we still knew that uh, the market should come up and there will be an opportunity for people to come out of it on the other side and reinvent themselves. And for that, they would need to look at things and how they run operations a little differently. So we've invested severely, uh, rather heavily 
uh, into the development of the product and added a number of additional modules as well as enhanced existing modules. We're talking about repairs modules, preventive, preventive maintenance. We're talking about inspections, rework, uh, repair. So there's a few additional functionalities to every module that we have had in the system. And now we have it at an advanced level so that companies can select and choose them uh, and set them up as per their specific requirements. We've also added such a thing as an email client. So we all use Outlook or some others uh, use Google as well for different purposes. But we also have experienced um, with our clients when we talk to them is that everybody needs to be able to control. And in a sense that not we have developed uh, and built in email client into Rigor, where all the emails come in, in to your operational uh, sphere of influence uh, from the clients, for example. So you can process them right within the within Rigor as a system and move them along in a chain uh, of communication from when the client, for example, a prospect to all the way when it becomes uh, a real client and then you, you can start working with them in the system. Uh, we've also enhanced our mobile oil field application specifically for the field. It has now many more features enabled in it. We also launched a mobile thin client, which replicates what you can do on a computer, except all you need is just an iPad with almost identical functionality, though, that is on the computer. And last but not least on the product lineup things uh, that we'll dive in a little more in detail is that we've offered a Ricker Star uh, configuration for still the companies that are now uh, coming into the market and are looking for a solution and, and, and are thinking beyond the spreadsheets, thinking beyond a non-systemic approach to how they manage operations. So we're offering that rigor start to those companies. And one more thing that we've done this year is we've opened a new office in Texas. So we're physically present where our clients are. Uh, so that's why we expect to be more in your face when it is possible so that you would know that we're there to help you either from the support side of the things or from initial uh, interaction when we need to talk to you about your specific needs. Uh, one more slide that I wanted to cover before we get into the uh, product a little more in depth for this uh, upcoming year is that Rigor is a people-to-people -people organization. We love our clients and we've been on this journey for the past uh, eight plus years now. Uh, so along the way we've uh, evolved as we would like to see and we see how our clients are helping um, us to build a better product for them. So it's a community that we're truly proud of. And along the way, we've received some of the recognition, which we are very helpful to our clients and our team. So thank you very much. So on that note, let me pass the microphone to Michael, who will talk uh, about the products and upcoming things in rigor. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our annual Rigor conference. I'm really glad to present uh, all our products today. And uh, let me talk about uh, the major releases uh, and release histories about the uh, uh, tw last 12 months. And uh, this year was a little bit different. Uh, and uh, we had three releases uh, in 2020. Uh, instead of two releases uh, uh, when we usually do so, and this is this is why we um, realize that um, uh, we need to focus on uh, the product development and help our clients to move for, uh, through these challenging times. Um, and um, now, one of the first uh, 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 um, published uh, HR, CRM, uh, job costing service calls, uh, job reservations and rework modules. Uh, some of them uh, new, some of them are uh, enhanced uh, significantly. In August, uh, we had another release uh, when we first time realized that uh, Rigor become the uh, operations uh, ERP and uh, we uh, update the homepage at job ticket, uh, advanced PO approval, maintenance module, and mobile thing client. Uh, and uh, another addition was integration with Power BI and Avalar tax, uh, uh, sales tax uh, uh, software. And uh, at the end of the year, uh, the current release uh, uh, 8.0 Odessa uh, added uh, lots of functionality we create uh, um, email client within CRM system, barcoding, security enhancement, uh, uh, advanced uh, mobile applications and uh, add mobile 
uh, client. Right now, uh, the um, oil, oil field services ERP subsystems uh, consist from several uh, different uh, group of modules, uh, which uh, will be uh, oil field services, uh, sales, purchases, finance, manufacturing, equipment rentals, everything combining together in one system. And that is why we called Rigor is an operational ERP. And uh, talking about um, uh, this concept, uh, we see that uh, it's it's very uh, a good solution for mid-sized companies and uh, companies who like to uh, combine several, uh, replace several solutions and to combine everything in one system. Uh, Rigor product family includes several um, applications uh, running on a different devices uh, and the major uh, is the a cloud oil field uh, where we uh, have uh, stored all our databases and uh, we have several configurations uh, for uh, sub-segments of the industry uh, for example surface equipment telecom frack and flow back waste management, downhaul tools and we have a special solution uh, released uh, uh, last year um, just recently uh, published a, a new press release about Rigger Start, a new solution for a small business. Based on Rigger, uh, all the great features uh, with affordable price. Uh, and uh, we encourage you to check this uh, if you're thinking about uh, implementing Rigger. Uh, uh, we have uh, right now uh, six major uh, mobile applications. Five of those uh, works as the uh, offline uh, mobile application with uh, synchronization to the mobile and synchronization back to the cloud. So we take it all field uh, operations uh, software, all field CRM, uh, the software for um, sale, uh, sales uh, team, purchase oil orders, uh, oil field dispatching and service calls. Another uh, great addition uh, for this year was a think line who uh, start working with the cloud uh, in online mode. So uh, this is what we are uh, presenting as a black mobile application, which is uh, uh, access to uh, cloud database from mobile phone in real time. So, um, the rigor community is growing and uh, our goal is to provide value to our clients uh, and that is why we decided to start dialogue uh, with the industry experts uh, uh, to explore different points of view and uh, share knowledge experience and expertise and uh, i'd like to present you a first interview with the industry expert uh james standridge uh which uh, uh has the industry expertise, uh, 15 years uh, uh, industrial experience, uh, including uh, complex uh, operations, system implementations and integrations. And um, we asked several questions to James uh, and uh, pre record the uh, answers and uh, James uh, today with us as well. So we can um, ask other questions to him uh, a little bit later. So um, let's start. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, my, my background initially came um, from uh, the project business analysis side, um, automation systems, integrations. Um, that brought me um, into oil and gas, where I have um, worked on a number of initiatives um, for um, big drilling services companies, um, primarily on the integration and implementation um, side. From an implementation perspective, once you've decided on a platform, once you have a partner in place, you have to, have to, have to, have to have a great implementation plan, which means know who your partner is, know what those integration points are, um, get, get the users involved with developing the go forward plan. Um, if you want to make an investment that never gets leveraged, ignore the end user. <laughs> Um, uh, it, it, it's essential that you get them in on the decision uh, making process and development 
they're the ones who know the utilization of the tool better than anybody in the company, um, better than the CIO um, of the largest uh, technology firm. The one who uses the system knows how it ought to be used and they need to be key into uh, the business analysis, go forward plan and uh, essential in the um, user acceptance testing as you go forward with implementation. To be honest, we could talk about this for the next three days and probably <laughs> not cover every factor that needs to come into this decision. Um, it, it's an incredibly um, complex process, but in its simplest form, um, you have to consider, and it's a valued future state. Where are we? What problem are we trying to solve? And what, how do we achieve that difference? Once we've identified that, it makes it a lot easier to define what you're looking for in a platform or a provider. Um, once you've identified those steps, then you have to solicit feedback from your users. Um, the people are going to have to support and maintain these uh, systems. Um, the um, implementation partners who are going to fill you in on uh, the capabilities of the platform that you may not even be aware of coming through a sales process. Um, you need to look at, uh, consult a, a business analysis process of how do we um, solve that business need. Let's identify it, quantify it, and, and how well does the platform uh, meet that. Let, let's talk uh, up to the project managers who are going to lead the uh, implementation. Um, who, who are the corporate sponsors? Once we've designed the greatest tool out there, if I don't have the backing of a champion on the corporate level, we can't secure funding to deliver. So it's an incredibly complicated process, um, but having a good provider who can come in and help you lead you through that um, process um, makes it a lot easier and is gonna be essential for successful implementation. And for anyone who's watching this who doesn't know, RFID is radio frequency identification. Um, you are all familiar with it. Um, if you've purchased an item at a department store and walked to the door and the alarm went off, you've had your first experience with RFID. Um, it trans it's transforming business, um, not just oil and gas, but business in general. Anyone who needs to know where their assets are needs to be examining this technology. It's incredibly cost effective. Now the challenges moving forward into especially a rental space is identification of the unique needs of what needs to be tracked. Um, and from a, in a technology integration standpoint, once we have a RFID network put in place, uh, we've defined our objectives, we've put the network in place. Um, it can be expanded through software to um, integrate with um, geolocation for our freight. So if we're using a third party freight carrier who um, is driving the truck full of rental parts to a drill site, I can read an RFID signal that says this material was put onto the truck, I can then associate that RFID signal with a GPS signal on that truck. Now I've got real time tracking until it gets to the drill site. When it's received, I can scan that RFID signal again and have ver delivery verification. Um, that's the, the, the capability. If you need visibility into where your rental parts are, how they're being utilized, that's the opportunity in this technology, um, whether it be handheld or warehousing, um, there's incredible opportunity in this. I think what we're talking here about is not necessarily tracking for the sake of tracking, but one of the main reasons why we're even talking about it is that how to make sure that your expensive um, assets are not getting lost because Absolutely. it just constitutes a significant, uh, you know, challenge and significant threat for many businesses, especially in the rental space. And I think using the technology to help with that would be a great way of doing it. Uh, and I think 
one question that I would have is that the durability and applicability, given uh, that in some cases, sensors may be easier or easily damaged uh, in expensive ones or environment in which the equipment is being used can be aggressive enough for the sensors not to be used specifically. So I think durability is an important part and it may be just only applicable in some cases more than in others. A absolutely. A a and once again, which technology um, is more fitting um, really depends on the nature of the product and the goals of the tracking. Um, I've seen um, implementation of passive technology in a warehouse space where they were tracking um, rubber goods, seals and whatnot, O-rings um, in and out of a facility and we're trying to speed up cycle counts and receiving and whatnot. Um, passive technology is great for that type of application. I've also seen application though of you know, you know, large blowout preventers um, that passive technology would be blocked by the amount of steel on it, um, at which point we have to go with active tagging, which is much more durable, much more um, robust. It's a higher cost, but if I'm tracking a high value asset that's not being lost and replaced and now delaying um, progress on a drill site, the investment is justified simply in the, in the uh, assurance that the product can be found and located. As we enter into a more competitive and tight drilling market, anybody who has ever um, showed concern about where their assets are and how they're being utilized and tracking and, and are we making the most valuable use of the investments we've made in hard technology out there, um, it, it almost becomes essential. The byproduct of making sure we use, utilize our assets efficiently and know where they are and how they're being used is through this type of technology, I speed up my cycle count. I, I now don't have to have a person counting pieces. I can, with a handheld RFID scanner, scan a um, pallet that tells me everything that's on that pallet is automatically now on site or received or whatnot. So I, I can now cut my labor costs, increase my efficiency, all the while assuring that my um, materials are being utilized. It, it, in a tight market, this is almost essential for survival. Thank you, James. Uh, and um, um, yeah, and we have a chance to um ask uh, questions to James uh, if you have any and uh, I'd like to ask right now uh, James do you do you want to add something and thank you um, I, I will say the target of rigor to as a one solution an ever expanding software suite that's fully integrated is going to be essential um, we talked about how to choose the right platform and a lot of businesses move forward with a plan to find a solution to a specific business need. And so they go out and they cherry pick a piece of software or um, that fills a specific need. The problem is what you end up with is 10 different systems that don't speak to each other, that have data duplicated against each other that don't agree, what's the source of truth, um, and, and taking a strategic approach where we think about a integrated solution that fills multiple business needs um, like rigor um, is going to be essential for the usability of your system moving forward long term. Um, what you don't want to end up with is a large investment in systems and tools that can't or end up not being utilized simply because they don't integrate, share data, and the use of multiple tools means that the end user simply won't use the tool and you'll continue to do things the way they've always been done. So kudos to you guys for building out that integrated platform to fill the industry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank, you. Thank you so much.
And I just wanted to, um, to, to tell all our guests uh, um, in the event today is that there is a Q&A um, control button at the bottom of your panel of you. So feel free to ask any questions. James is going to be with us till the end of this uh, presentation. So feel free to ask that million dollar question that you've been dying to ask somebody who knows about the RPT technology, about the implementation process and has a Sigma Six Sigma black belt certification in how to do things right. So uh, take the opportunity and type up your question and uh, it might be answered. Let's see. But thank you, James, Absolutely. indeed. Absolutely. It could be literally a $1 million question or maybe but, two. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Uh, uh, we definitely will continue our conversation and uh, I would uh, like to uh, invite you to our next uh, webinars, uh, which uh, we are literally running every single week. Uh, so uh, please stay in tune and uh, yeah, let's move forward. We have another uh, exciting um, topic here. Uh, we'd like to talk about digital signatures and stamps, uh, which we can collect in the field. And uh, I'd like to present uh, Gleb Kobitz, uh, who is with PL Operations, and he will show us uh, some uh, latest development of rigor. Sure. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Gleb. So let's talk about one of the recent development of the rigor uh, system, which is the digital uh, signature and stamp stamps um, collection capabilities. So basically, why we have developed this uh, integration with a with a uh, several uh, uh, providers already? Because we've seen that many uh, companies in the oil field experience pretty much the same problems with uh, getting these uh, all these documents signed uh, in the field, and then as a part of the whole process, uh, collect the rental revenue uh, from 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 the clients because. Uh, one of the most important uh, step on the on the billing process is to get this approval from the company uh, that you are providing services or rental equipment to uh, as, as the proof of the job uh, completed. So basically, uh, there are several challenges that companies experience uh, with the paper tickets that uh, there is a long turnaround time uh, to get these signatures uh, done on, on the paper tickets, right? So your field technicians should go to the field and, and find this person who, who always uh, don't, uh, doesn't have time to sign or even doesn't want to sign sometimes, but still we need to get these signatures uh, collected. Also, uh, we, we then run uh, to the delay with the uh, tickets approval and, and uh, actually uh, get the signatures. Uh, this all leads to uh, delay with the customer billing because without signatures being collected, we cannot uh, issue invoice sometimes to the client, right? Like revenue uh, timely. And uh, that, that has a direct impact on our uh, financial uh, statements and financial position of the company. So, and uh, also there are some additional costs uh, associated with collecting these kind of signatures because it's just simple drive time of the field technician to the field just to get this signature on the paper leads to the, uh, leads to the uh, additional costs. And also there are some risks associated with this standard kind of analog approach of collecting signatures because uh, literally uh, paper tickets can be lost sometimes uh, they can be missed, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we've seen situations when uh, companies representatives uh, cannot be found on the location or they have left the company. And now we have to figure out who needs to sign the documents. And if that happens a few weeks after the, the job has been done, so that, that may be a challenge. And also sometimes the essential information on ticket on the ticket can be missed or even forgotten if, if it's not captured timely. So all these risks are can be mitigated or uh, reduced by using the digital signatures as the modern technology of uh, using the uh, electronic uh, document exchange. So basically we've tried to make this uh, process as smooth as possible in the, in the rigor system for you as a users. Uh, because that's just literally a few clicks um, and you get your, you get your uh, 
documents signed. So basically we start with the standard print form uh, of the ticket or of the invoice in the rigor system. So when you print a ticket, you then see a special, uh, a new button uh, on your screen, which is the Panda Doc button, because that's a, a solution provider for the digital signatures. Uh, this is uh, pretty much similar to a uh, well-known um, DocuSign provider, but that that that's another solution provider. So you send this print form to this to the Panda Doc and to the recipient who is stated on this ticket. So you can select from the uh, from the. Uh, list of recipients. And then once it's sent to the Panda Doctor recipient to get it signed, so the recipient receives this um, uh, request to sign and he can sign it uh, electronically and then send it back uh, to the rigor system. So, and you as the, as the user or as the accountant dispatcher, you can receive this PDF attachment signed uh, both in your rigor, rigor application and in the separate email with uh, PDF attachment. So on the next screen, I'm gonna uh, show you how it works in the lifetime, and I'm gonna comment on the workflow in the meantime, alongside the process. So basically that's exactly the process. So when we open the rental ticket, we check all the details of this rental ticket, if it's been completed correctly, then we can select the primary contact to whom uh, this uh, ticket will be sent, sent to the signature and we can set up multiple uh, recipients. Then we just hit print button and print our rental ticket. On the rental ticket print form, we will see all the details uh, for that specific job. We will see the PandaDoc recipient. And basically we just need to hit the PandaDoc button. And uh, do you want to send the document to PandaDoc to sign? Yes. So we get notification from the system that the ticket has been signed for, for to, to PandaDoc. Now the recipient, and we can definitely close this print form. Uh, so, and we can see on our dashboard of the tickets that uh, it's still waiting for the uh, signature, but then recipient receives the email right away in a few seconds, literally, with the request to sign the new document. So if even if I'm in the field, I can receive it on my phone uh, and I can open just a standard browser and go over the print form, double check all the details. And now I have got a few fields that I need just to put my signatures, initials and date. So basically just uh, hit this uh, signature field, select the prompted uh, uh, like type of, of the signature where I can just draw on the screen my signature. I can also put the initials and select it from the prompted um, options. Uh, just put it here and select the date of this electronic signature. Let it be today, tomorrow, whatever. And we finalize the document by hitting just one button. The document gets finalized. Now we can also download this document and to save it to our um, memory storage. Uh, and it also shows you the signature certificate attached to each individual document. So that's a unique stamp, time stamp of the signed document. Now we will go back to rigor application. We can update the PandaDoc statuses for tickets. And uh, basically we receive these tickets signed back to the rigor application attached to this ticket. We see the green paper clip. That means that this document has been signed electronically. We can open this document and go to the attached files. And we see that this attached, uh, this printed, uh, sorry, this PDF signed is attached to this specific rental ticket. So everything uh, happens automatically. We can open this file. We can save it to our computer or to the cloud storage, or we can open it from the email that already uh, has come to our inbox. So I'm just opening this uh, PDF to double check all the details. And I see that signatures and initials are there and signature certificate is there as well. So that's how it works actually. And uh, I think it's pretty amazing and uh, I, I hope you like it. So we can move on to the next slide and uh, I'll just share a few words about the digital stamp. It's uh, so the, from the workflow standpoint, everything happens the same way. 
like you do the, the same functionality steps, but uh, on the invoice print form, you may have a digital stamp with uh, fields that are predefined. And these are the most common fields that will be um, signed in uh, electronically by your customer. Uh, so it's usually the well name, uh, it's AFE number, sometimes it's cost code, uh, it's the general amount of the ticket or of the invoice and the date and again, printed name and signature. So everything happens the same way and it's pretty smooth and, and simple. Good, thank you. Thank you, Gleb. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the poll uh, about uh, this particular feature. So uh, Dasha and Nikolai, please move forward with that. Uh, yeah, so we have a question to ask. Uh, so how important is digital signature and stamp for your organization? I will roll the poll now so you uh, should see uh, it right now on your screen. So just pick uh, the variant which is uh, which you feel is better describes the situation that you have. Uh, either they're important or they're just nice, nice to have or not important at all. So I'll just uh, wait for a few moments uh, so everybody has their chance to reply and share the results with you. And again, um, we know just while you guys are um, clicking the buttons, uh, we know that we've been asked so many times, how can we implement a digital ticket and digital signature uh, in the field so to be able uh, to not any longer waste the time of traveling because in some organizations we have people that are actually carrying papers. It's their specific job to carry paper from the office into the well site and hunt for the people to sign them. So although we cannot guarantee that um, that when electronic signature email goes out and a person who's supposed to sign a ticket will definitely sign that, but you will be notified while they receive that document because the system electronically tracks the interaction of, our e uh, of the email and opens of the documents. It has also an expiry date. So this only is to help you to enhance that and be to enhance the capability to get to the people uh, to in front of their eyes uh, to have them sign it. Uh, and at the same time, save the time and money on getting those signatures collected. So I think in this day and age, when specifically we have um, everything done electronically, so we wanted to um, to let you know that the system is now capable of doing this. So there you and go. See the results. Yeah, so we see the results. Uh, and indeed, I think that pretty much correlates with what we thought, that it's very important. Uh, in some cases, it would be a nice to have, but... Um, no one marked it as not important. So I think we're, we're, we're creating a solution that should help you guys when you're ready to implement it, if you are using Reaper right now. So the solutions like uh, DocuSign, PandaDoc uh, can uh, send you a notification uh, when uh, the something happens. Uh, even if the uh, signature rejected, uh, you will receive a notification that uh, the uh, recipient uh, reject the signed the document. Anyways, uh, this is a great feature. Uh, we uh, will uh, make it available um, very, very soon. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to start testing it, let us know. And uh, we have another great uh, um, uh, program, uh, which we're starting uh, um, this year, and uh, this is a rigor referral program, and uh, I'd like to introduce you, Eugene Maturing, who is a, a project manager, and he will uh, provide some details about uh, this program. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, historically, uh, during our webinars and user conferences, we've been uh, approached by a number of companies that would like to partner with us on a different levels. And so today we are pleased to announce the Riga referral program. Uh, the program was actually designed to uh, provide a simple way for, uh, you know, submitting your referral and getting uh, rewarded for it. Uh, it is also an initial step for moving into a Riga partner program, uh, which, you know, you will be able to find more information at our website as well. But uh, if you look at the referral program itself, uh, our team uh, has a very ambitious goal for the upcoming years, uh, uh, which is to become the best in class uh, operational ERP uh, software for the oil field rental and service companies. And so to get there, we must constantly uh, improve our product and services, 
uh, and that requires continuously uh, attracting new clients. So that is why we designed the Riga referral program. Uh, referrals is the best way uh, we know uh, to attract our clients. And so by helping us to find new customers, you will earn awards, which includes 5% uh, of the uh, annual first year annual subscription fee. Uh, you know, the moment when your referral joins our digital community. Uh, we definitely would like you uh, to help us with that. Uh, and, um, you know, really the program itself is a very simple four step uh, process that you need to follow. Uh, number one, you just go to our website uh, at rigger.us referral dash program. You can also find a link to it uh, through the website navigation menu. There, you just submit a very quick uh, contact information details. Uh, one of our team members will contact you within the next 24 hours just to uh, verify a few details with respect to the referral. Um, then our team will work with your referral and that will uh, basically trigger uh, everything from the sales to onboarding process. Uh, and uh, once the referral joins our community, you will be uh, receiving your reward. Uh, so that's very simple, uh, straightforward. Uh, if you would like to learn more, please again, visit our website uh, as per the link provided in the slide, or you can just again, navigate through the website uh, navigation menu and, and, and you'll easily find it. Uh, I think that's it for me for the referral program. Now I would like to pass the mic back to uh, Nikolai, I believe. Thank you, Eugene. Um, and indeed, um, so we're looking forward to growing our community and uh, referral program is a, great, um, is a great opportunity for some of you who are on the call looking for ways to uh, work with us. So the next part of our presentation today uh, is gonna be dedicated to um, our dear to our heart um, group of people that are active users, but they're the active users of rigor and um, our clients. And, um, and these are the clients that have also been very receptive in a, in a way that they wanted to share some information about uh, how their experience using rigor has been so far, uh, what prompted them to look for a solution, and um, uh, what the uh, advice they may give to some of the companies that have not embarked yet but are pondering of uh, making a decision. So what kind of advice these guys are able to um, to share with you. So we've recorded some of these interviews of this um, recent couple of weeks because we knew that uh, our clients are busy people and everybody is. So we're happy to see you guys here and uh, we're happy that our clients were able to share some of the information with you. The first one on the line is uh, the company that some of you in the frack and flow back business know this company out of North Dakota, they're called Send Pro and uh, Drew Anderson was the champion uh, at Send Pro who is uh, the head of sales and automation and project development. So he is the one who's actually took on uh, the charge uh, in the organization to implement and learn everything about rigor. So they've been using rigor for some time. So let's uh, have a listen. Is that we didn't take advantage of that initial database setup to uh, um, customize our platform. Okay. Well, number one, support. You guys, you've got that. You know, you got you got a great great process set up there with injury. I don't know who else you have doing that, but it's for us, um, I think for any customer that's going to be key. She's very quick to respond, and I need to get this invoice <laughs> out today. You know, type of thing. I'm like, whoa, I can't do it. And injury's right on there. I think overall, you know, we had a couple of circumstances that went uh, mm -hmm. to the developers, and I think it was maybe a 24 to 48 hour turnaround on some of them changes, and sometimes less. And Sometimes it was just real little stuff like taxes or, you know, yeah. little things like that. Um, send an email off to Indri and she uh, confirmed she would send it to the developers and let me know when it was fixed. And sometimes that's a couple hours, maybe two days tops. Mm -hmm. yeah. So good team of developers. They're doing great. So yeah, you guys have been very good it. with us for sure. You know, it's good to hear. Very reasonable. And, and I have to say thank you for being you know, patient with our lack of knowledge on a lot of this stuff. And I, I'm really happy that we've developed up to this point and are able to chat and, and grow together. 
Well, I, I sort of have a more generalized answer for that because um, what they need to do is they need to do a self-evaluation first and foremost. They need to understand that they have somebody in their business that has aptitude for such things, right? Yeah. And if that person exists, then it's, it's important for them to develop their business strategy versus their operational platform. Now, if, if they have a person that has aptitude and knowledge about how to do it, then they're good to go. And, and we were pretty diligent about the five companies that we looked at when we ultimately chose Rigor. So I would, I would have no problem with telling somebody that too and saying, look, man, we, we looked at five different companies and, and Rigor was for, for my business, um, you know, very uh, directed towards already as a, as a standard platform already gen, uh, directed towards our operation. Um, and if, so if you had somebody call me that was in the same industry as me, I would definitely point them right to rigor. Thank you very much. Uh, Drew, Drew is not with us in the meeting today, but he's very, he's been very kind to share some of the insights uh, about their experience. So they've been, they've been using rigor for a little more than a year now. And again, the guys, he was pretty, I, think, I guess, explicit. Uh, and one of the challenges, again, is that to have the system set up and make sure that they get the good results. So we're happy to have a customer like Sandpro and many more uh, forward-looking companies that want to have a system that helps them to grow. And they're scaling now their business, so we're happy to see them grow. So the next one I wanted to introduce to you is a Canadian business. Uh, it's a um, company that's called Catch Can. So they have, uh, they originate out of Canada, but they have operations in the US, in the Middle East, in Mexico, and in South America as well. Uh, and Ryan, uh, Ryan Lowe is IT project manager. So it's an example of a company that actually, exactly to what Drew was saying, that they hired a person uh, who now is probably a permanent um, uh, person and in the organization to really engage all the different functional department in the organization and have the rigor set up. So let's just uh, listen to what Ryan had to say about their his experience. Uh, manual entry from one system to the next. Uh, you know, learning learning the the day to day actual day to day processes in in all departments is really required uh, to select the correct software, in my opinion. Um, and, and, and that's kind of par for the course uh, for most small to medium sized companies. Um, and so, you know, a lot of these systems uh, are, are generally five to 10 years behind uh, in terms of the core applications. Uh, and the new systems, of course, are, are not generally compatible with that, with the older technology. And so there's uh, kind of a, a disconnect, uh, not only like, in the department in terms of process, but then also the data collection and then, and then the systems themselves. And so it's uh, uh, really need to think about, you know, how big of an impact implementing new software is gonna be and whether or not it's just, you know, bolting in for one specific process or whether or not uh, the efficiency gain is really gonna be from uh, connecting the departments back together uh, without having some type of inter, uh, com you know, interdepartment uh, tracking system for du duplicate entry. And so there's really three options. Uh, one is to, you know, figure out what that core piece of software is. It's usually the accounting system uh, and then and then building that software out uh, to handle the other processes. Uh, the second op op kind of potential uh, way to go um, with new software is, you know, to start from scratch with a whole new kind of blank ERP. Um, um, but the, the challenge with that is, you know, those, those ERPs, they have all the functionality, but uh, there's no process uh, built. You have to build all of that process from scratch. And, and that, in a lot of cases, is more difficult uh, and costly, um, uh, you know, than even trying to build up the existing software. Um, and so, you know, really at the end of the day, especially for small, medium-sized enterprises, uh, in my opinion, the, the best option is almost always uh, an out-of-box solution that's designed specifically for your industry, where the core processes of the industry, uh, in, like in Catch Can's case, of course, is, is rental and oil field service. Uh, and so to find a, a software um, uh, that has all of that process built into the system already, so that you're not focused on so much on the, on the IT side and, and the development and the programming, um, but more so allows you to focus on the, the actual 
roles within the organization and the people and their specific processes. And so starting with the, with the software like, like Rigor uh, as the core system um, really makes it easy to get up and running quickly. Yeah, um, well, I mean, the, the journey, uh, the challenges, you know, it, it, it is really, you know, trying to learn or understand the actual processes that are happening in day to day. And people don't have uh, a, a lot of IT skills typically. And so what, what ends up happening is, is, is that the user is, is trained on, on specific buttons Right, and and it's it's about the about their specific steps, and and so moving from that that old system where everybody's kind of got their um, their steps memorized and they know what buttons to push, uh, the the biggest the biggest challenge there is you know even even updating existing systems and changing the look and feel of the interface uh, can can have just as many problems as implementing an, an entirely new set of software, mm -hmm. and so. Um, the, the experience with rigor is, is, is really good because again, it's, you know, designed for oil field service and rentals. And so the, there's a, an intuitive process, um, uh, in the system. And as long as, as a person, as long as, you know, you can work with the employee to understand the process that they're trying to complete. And then, and then show how that process works in rigor. Um, then it, I think, it becomes easier for the employee to adopt the new system. Um, the and, and and it was quite simple actually. You know, because rigor is so well set up to handle rental fleet and and oil and gas. Um, finding the match between the process that was being done already in the old system uh, to the process in rigor. Um, it, it was fairly easy to kind of find those similarities and then, and then get the, the user to be able to, uh, you know, act, act effectively enter those new documents. Oh yeah. The, the support, uh, and, and team, uh, has been excellent to work with. Um, um, you know, support, uh, is, is always available both to the user and to the, you know, the champion that's responsible for the implementation. Um, uh, it's it's uh, um, always been uh, easy to get uh, support uh, in a timely manner uh, and, uh, and the configuration changes and, and whatnot that are requested are, um, um, you know, completed, uh, completed and, uh, and, you know, always assistance with that implementation. Perfect. Thank you. And again, um, I just caught up with Ryan this uh, this week, earlier this week. So uh, again, a company that has multi different divisions, they are now moved uh, all the operations into rigor. So they're using for the digital tickets and uh, looking to expand even to other countries where they're using uh, their equipment for the rentals. So it has been a pleasure to work with the companies like Hedgecan again. One thing, one common thread among all clients of ours, uh, the companies are looking from the foundation, understanding, so to speak, uh, Gemba, so how people are doing the stuff on the ground and then matching with the existing process in rigor. And that's what seems to be paying back off well for them. Uh, let me pass the microphone to Michael then to get to the other uh, section of our presentation today. So that's uh, the Oscar time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. And I'm really excited to, to start this part of our uh, uh, conference today. And um, the um, thing which we saw last year that uh, different companies act differently at the dot times like 2020. Unfortunately, some of our clients uh, went out from the business last nine months. Uh, another group of organizations decided to focus on the business process development uh, and uh, rigor customizations and new module implementations. So they understood that without digital transformation, it will be very hard to run business in the future. And we'd like to recognize uh, our, our clients who did that uh, and uh, we had uh, several candidates for each of two nomina uh, uh, nominations today. Uh, and I'd like to present the first one, the Digital Innovation Challenger. 
the company who challenged itself, first of all, and challenged us after that uh, to create digital oil field operations. And I'm really pleased to congratulations uh, to, to pass my congratulations to D, D, DWS, the Downfall Well Solution uh, companies. This is, this is an award. Uh, so my, my congratulations to uh, Chang, uh, Chandler Avinash uh, and the entire team of Downfall Well Solutions uh, in uh, Spring, Texas, um, the uh, company who runs the Downfall to Rental Operations, uh, a very uh, detailed, uh, time-consuming, sometimes uh, a very heavy, uh, uh, small parts connecting uh, and assembling and disassembling processes, uh, 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 running the business, moving and uh, rapidly growing uh, nowadays. So our award goes to DWS uh, and uh, we recognize uh, uh, the Downfall Well Solutions Company as the digital innovator challenger. Our Perfect. congratulations and we'll send this award uh, this, this week uh, to the guys. Uh, and uh, the next time when we'll be in Houston, uh, definitely we'll sit down and chat about uh, uh, all our next steps. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. So the next uh, nomination is for the Digital Innovation Leader. And uh, I think this year has been a very uh, interesting one, as we mentioned, for many clients of ours. And uh, some went out of business. Some actually have started acquiring new business. And some are in the process of doing it, while others have done. Uh, but again, we are uh, nominating and we're selecting um, the winners of the awards uh, by our team based on the vision of the company. So if the company has a specific uh, far-fetched uh, uh, and very ambitious goals for themselves as an organization of their team. So this is definitely fits the bill and the next uh, company that's gonna be, uh, so every, every who is nominated for this and the recipient of the award definitely fits that category. So the, the second criteria for the end leader would have been not only to challenge our team, but to challenge themselves severely in front of us, how they can do their business way better and implement uh, a system um, that would uh, replace the patchwork of several scores of different internal systems to manage operations from the spreadsheets to uh, different disparate applications and some other subsystems that they were using. And they challenged themselves uh, as part of implementation of rigor and working with us to replace as much as possible uh, and pack everything into one roof as an integrated solution. Uh, and the third criteria would have been is that they continue to grow and actually there is no, uh, they're on the path of the operational excellence simply because they're bringing other uh, complex systems to integrate with rigor to make sure that they run um, telemetric system uh, as well within rigor and exchange information goes from several complex uh, systems and provide uh, the management and the investors of the organization with a functional dashboard to see the operation status. So the there were several nominees, but the winner of this Digital Innovation Leader Award this year is a company called Baseline Energy Services out of Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, again, it's a it's it's a known business in Texas. They are in the business of power generation uh, across operating across ten states. Uh, with the fleet that has grown significantly since the first time we talked to them, which was about two years ago, are fully functional using rigor for the operations management, fully implemented uh, in the field and in the office, from the VP of finance uh, to the field technician who's submitting uh, all the digital field tickets, tracking time, updating information about the average generator, uh, generating uh, maintenance tickets, repairs tickets in the field and communicating back to the office through the cloud to mobile interaction. So that's uh, fits the bill of the digital innovation of the year. So congratulations team, Baseline Energy Services. And as soon as yeah. we're in Fort Worth, uh, the award goes and we will have another sit down with you and we'll gladly shake your hands and raise a glass to congratulate both of us in the successful implementation of the system and, on, and, and lay the path for the ongoing development uh, for both uh, us as a product and you as a great user of the system. 
Yeah, our best congratulations to Mark, John, Jeff, uh, and the rest of the baseline team. And, uh, so, and their investors as well. So one thing absolutely. just wanted to, to make a note is that uh, there have very active investors in the business. So they wanted to be sure that uh, there is a transparent system to track the performance and make the corrective actions when they need to analyze their business operations. Okay, good. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, that uh, kind of pleasant event uh, for uh, Rigger team and uh, our, our clients. It was a, a very interesting year uh, from uh, a product development perspective. And uh, uh, we have a very interesting year to come. Uh, and uh, I'd like to share some lights um, uh, to uh, regarding uh, 2021 um, developments. So right now we actively um, um, moving uh, and developing solution for a small business, Rigger Start. Uh, we're developing a very new uh, configuration, which is called Rigger Machine Shop, uh, uh, specifically designed for repair shop for the oil and gas uh, uh, machine shops. Uh, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, um, the first version will be ready uh, in uh, uh, April, May. Uh, talking about the general rigor uh, cloud oil field application, um, there are several ways where we will focus uh, our um, software development uh, team. It will be oil field CRM. Uh, the uh, enhance the CRM module. We have lots of ideas. We have a, a great feedback from our clients, and uh, uh, CRM module will be. Uh, a top priority for us. Uh, we will enhance the digital stamp and signatures, uh, uh, which we uh, shown today. Uh, another uh, big thing uh, will be a project management, uh, uh, the component which we implement internally, because as you know, we use Rigor internally and um, uh, we add uh, a project management to Rigor uh, just recently and uh, it works perfectly. And we, uh, I'd like to explore if our clients uh, who run uh, complex projects uh, I'd like to have the project management component within the system. Uh, Rigor Mobile oil field will be another big thing for uh, next year development. Uh, we right now uh, start testing uh, online offline mode for uh, mobile application. Uh, so um, to have the combination between existing uh, solutions which we have offline and online mobile applications. So right now we're testing and working towards uh, to have those solutions uh, running combining. So um, really, really tough to explain how, how technically it should, should happen, but um, uh, we are very excited and uh, uh, moving, moving forward uh, to, uh, toward this uh, uh, very new uh, mobile application. Uh, next uh, big topic, uh, which we constantly monitoring, uh, it, it's an RFID we mentioned today. Uh, this technology um, become more and more available, and uh, we believe that uh, next uh, uh, couple years it will be a dramatic change uh, in, in the price tags. Uh, of the uh, RFID technology uh, implementations, and uh, we'd like to um, work uh, work on those projects with our clients. And of course, uh, integrations with uh, accounting and invoicing systems, uh, telemetry and tech info and marketing for systems. Uh, we have uh, three ongoing integrations right now, uh, and uh, we will present uh, those new integrations uh, in uh, the spring. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we will uh, show you uh, more um, advanced features and uh, uh, more uh, beautiful things, uh, which we will add to rigor this year. So thank you. Um, thank you indeed, everyone for staying with us. Uh, we just run over a little bit of, of over an hour, but we hope that you find that what we've delivered today as the information 
was very useful to you uh, because it was not only us speaking. However, some of the novelties of this webinar were that you were able to see actually see us in person, up close in person over Zoom. So that's a good thing, we hope. But let us know what you think. Uh, you can always share your feedback through different means of communication. Uh, and uh, so this is a Q&A part and um, it has been open all session long. I don't have any specific questions right now to anyone. And I don't think it's just because uh, we've answered all of them while we're talking. Maybe it's just because of, and here you go. So I have a um, question that came in. Uh, maybe it's more of a comment. Uh, you can, uh, so I'll just kind of read it out. Thank you very much. So um, Ringer, can we track the field tickets that we created and the field is special in the office more? Okay, uh, you're welcome for the webinar. So using Ringer, can we track the field tickets that were created at the field, especially in offline mode, but never got submitted to admin users for approval and processing? Question mark. This is important in order for us to invoice on time and make sure we are not losing revenue. It's a good, uh, good. It's a very good question. Yeah, very very good question. And uh, uh, to answer that question, we need to understand how the uh, mobile uh, uh, online offline works. And this is actually. Uh, a, a very common um, question to us uh, when uh, people start asking how how I can generate uh, tickets in in the field, and uh, um, the the but the 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 only thing which stop us to uh, say yes that the user can send uh, uh, can send this ticket to the cloud. So without that, we have no control under the, the user phone. So um, um, and uh, in, in this case, uh, it's only the push button uh, for, for now. But uh, when we uh, come to the point, to final point with that uh, application of the online offline mobile app, I believe it will be possible even without uh, um, user interaction. So as soon as they will uh, send this, we will uh, put this synchronization uh, task uh, to the uh, to the sequence. And as soon as we will have the connection, that uh, uh, ticket uh, will appear in the cloud. So this is this is problem which we are dealing right now. It's more technical problem than and and organizational. Uh, so the. I believe I believe the kind of very very soon it will be possible. Right now it's possible as well. Uh, the only uh, thing we you need to uh, ask the guys uh, to press the sync button after that uh, after when when they have the internet connection. Yeah, and I think speaking of the offline, I think one other comment just I wanted to make here is that. Uh, if you trust your field technicians when they fill out a ticket and want to generate, but they're in the offline mode because there's no internet, but they still to have to be able to generate an invoice. So that's the challenge we're trying to technically resolve. Uh, in most cases, they need to synchronize. At least the document would have to travel to the internet for a few seconds uh, and then come back to your device. And then after that, um, you can then have the signature on the invoice after that. But we can actually walk you through uh, Zara. So if you want, we can just show you uh, what how the how the system currently works and what it does. There's no charge for us showing it to you, and um, and you can just ask any questions while we're right doing that. But thank you for yeah. the question. Another, yeah, I, I agree with Nikolai's point that uh, uh, we can generate uh, even or pre-generate tickets uh, in in the cloud and then send to, send to the mobile. But again. Uh, depending on the, how the process is designed and how, uh, what kind of environment, uh, because we know that in, in some uh, situation we uh, have very odd, uh, very, very um, fast moving uh, parts and uh, lots of uh, different circumstances influence our decision about tickets or not tickets, uh, the job. So yeah, we, we, we need to uh, kind of uh, sit down and uh, work more precisely uh, about this problem. Um, I have, uh, I have, okay, so let's just questions. Um, that would be great. Okay, thank you, Zara. We'll be, we'll, we'll be in touch then to show you in a little bit uh, in detail how that works. So no pressure whatsoever. Uh, I have a question. I have a million dollar question. And I know that somebody on this, um, in this meeting, in this conference might've wanted to ask this question, but for some reason, Neil may have not done that yet. So I want to ask a question, uh, James, a question. 
So how, uh, speaking of the RFID, you've had the experience in implementing RFID tracking uh, in, in the oil field. So I know that our market is a little different. So we're not talking about the companies that are multi-billion dollar revenue, not quite yet, but I think the democratization of the oil field IT systems is one of the major um, missions of ours. So making sure that the latest technology is available and affordable to everybody now, because everybody you know, carries an, a, a computer in their pockets right now. So speaking of the RFID and implementing it uh, in, a, in an organization, what is an ideal size of an organization where it may make sense? And there may be different criteria. If you can just you know, lay it out briefly. So what do you think based on your experience? Uh, uh, thank you. A and the simple answer is that you have to be big enough that the utilization of your corporate assets, company assets matter to you. Um, the, from a tagging perspective, um, we can get the cost per tag down to a few cents. Um, scanning, you're talking from a few hundred to a few thousand. Um, and then obviously with platforms such as yours, where you're looking at integration into a core ERP system, the cost is really not, doesn't have to be huge for the implementation of this technology. The question is, is it important to you to know where your assets are and how they're being utilized? Um, and I think any company, um, you know, from startup to large multinational corporate deal with those issues and have to address those concerns. So I guess we don't know quite whether it's a million dollar or two or less, but it, it is more affordable than somebody may think about it. And I think a year, every year it gets more and more affordable because new sensors coming on the market and new technologies and integration technologies are becoming available simply because everybody are looking, is looking at it and want to integrate into one or another source of a tracking system. The, the technology as far as identification with RFID has been around a long time. Um, and it was primarily implemented initially in retail um, to prevent theft. Um, and we've all seen that, we've all brushed against that technology. What companies you're seeing develop um, is how else can I integrate that into my business? Um, how can I use that to verify my receipts, my deliveries to make, so that I don't have um, shrink going in and out of my warehousing facilities? How can I use that to uh, verify my count? I need to verify inventory. Um, and you're seeing the application grow as you see platforms, especially ERP-centered platforms, uh, integrate that technology and move it over uh, to a different application. Um, you're seeing the, te the application of it grow and the opportunities are endless. Um, the cost is not huge. Okay, good. Well, that's the question I wanted to ask personally. And I'm just looking at the list. I I don't think we have any more questions. So I just wanted to ask our panel if, they, if anybody has any other questions, guys, uh, before we will say goodbye for another year, but be in touch in the meantime through the social media. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all our clients uh, of uh, that uh, great year together. Uh, and uh, I want to wish uh, everyone uh, that uh, the price of oil uh, going up uh, as it uh, was uh, last two months. So, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank the entire regular team for this uh, user conference. I already see that it's a, it's a great event and uh, we uh, had uh, lots of uh, positive feedback, which is uh, uh, kind of boost the energy and uh, give us uh, more uh, reason to move forward. Uh, we even, even faster and uh, uh, provide more value to our clients. So thank you, everyone, uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, uh, have a very successful uh, 2021 year. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, and uh, to those of you who 
still don't know which I doubt how to get a hold of us. Here is on the screen, you can see the main means of communication interaction. So uh, next week, same time, same place, we're gonna host another webinar. So please do log on the website, register and uh, stay tuned for the updates next week and the weeks following that. And special uh, thanks to James for joining us today. And uh, uh, we are looking forward for the next conversation uh, about operations and uh, uh, operation excellence and implementations of the software and different technologies. So uh, let's, let's think about that and uh, let's prepare our next great event. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you.